Okay, this is the P3 paper from January 2021. It's question number three. And if we have a look at it, we can see we've got some work on algebraic fractions here, which is from the algebraic methods topic. And we've got some work on inverse functions, which is from the functions and graphs topic. Okay, let's make a start to this. It's a relatively long question. So part A says, can we show that fx, which we've got as being 3 minus x minus 2 all over x plus 1, and 5x plus 26 all over 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Can we show that that can be written down in that format? So immediately my eyes are drawn to this quadratic. I'm going to pretty much assume that that will factorize and actually I think it will probably factorize such that I can then make all of these three functions into the same denominator relatively quickly. So let's do the factorizing of the quadratic first of all. Get rid of those three bits. So we're going to get give ourselves a bit of space here is equal to 3 minus, this bit's not changing at all at the moment, x minus 2 over x plus 1, the 5x plus 26 is not going to change. But factorising this quadratic factorises to x plus 1, 2x minus 5. Now this is what I meant before. I was expecting to have something like that occurring because now when I'm trying to do my same denominator for all of them, that's going to be a simple process to go through and do. If I multiply top and bottom by that for the first term, second term, I'm going to need to multiply top and bottom by 2x minus 5. And the third term is already in the right sort of uh, format to start off with. Now there's going to be a lot of algebra to do for this bit here. And in terms of the video, I'm going to do it relatively quickly. You can take your time. You can multiply out those two first, get your answer, then multiply it by three here. The same with uh, the second term. Actually, second term is something to really be careful about multiplying those two out but then the key is you've got that minus in there which is really you need to take account of that but I'll show you what I did I actually did uh, for this first term here did the multiplying and at the same time multiplied by the three so I actually got goodness sake I actually got 6x squared minus 15x plus 6x minus 15. Then for the second one, I took account of the minus as well at the same time, so it's minus 2x squared. It worked out to be plus 4x plus 5x minus 10, but all of those terms here have taken account of that negative in there at the same time. And then plus 5x plus 26, all over the same denominator, which is x plus 1, 2x minus 5. And now you've simply got to tidy up that top one there. When I did that, I got 4x squared plus 5x plus 1, all divided by x plus 1, 2x minus 5. And this is, well, at least a little bit of a check here that that top part then, when that factorizes to 4x plus 1, x plus 1. And if, you, if you're struggling with factorizing quadratics, go and have a look somewhere else on my channel and there'll be videos about um, that sort of thing. Yeah, when I, when I did that factorizing then, I was helped by the fact that I knew that the top quadratic would have to factorize to include one of these two. I didn't know which one it was going to include, 
but it would include one of those two so that I'm able to do this next step of dividing out the x plus ones. So I now end up with four x plus one all over two x minus five. And as we can see, there's a lot of algebra in there, but when I come up with that relatively simple answer and it looks in that format, I'm pretty convinced that I've managed to negotiate all of that without making um, any mistakes. Quite a lot of work there. Uh, we need to really focus on that, but that's fine. That's what they're testing us on for that particular part, part A. What does part B say? So part B says, can we now find the inverse function? Yeah, this is a standard method, isn't it? If I've got um, fx equals 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 5, and I want to find the inverse function, then I'm going to just set y equals 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange to get x equals, make x a subject, and that will be the inverse function. So let's just go ahead and do that. So multiply, cross multiply by the 2x minus 5. Now multiply that out. So I'm going to get 2xy minus 5y is equal to 4x plus 1. Get the x's all onto one side, so 2xy minus 4x, and get everything else onto the other side, 5y plus 1. What have I done there? I've taken that over to that side and that over to that side, all in one go. Factorise and take x out, or factorise and take 2x out, doesn't matter, but factorise and, and get the x's out there. Uh, I only want x, don't I? Sorry, no, you can only do that. 2y minus 4 was 5y plus 1. I almost forgot what I was doing there for a second. So x equals 5y plus 1 over 2y minus 4. And we can now say, okay, so the inverse function, just write it as they would have wanted it, is 5x plus 1 all over 2x minus 5. So as we're looking at that, then that's the inverse function. They're then going to want us to say what the domain of that function is, which I, to be honest with you, I would have put on anyway. It takes a little bit of work to do, but they're specifically asking for it. What's the domain of this function here? And so we're going to use the idea that the domain of f to the minus 1x is the same as the range of fx. That's a statement or a fact that you should know. So really what they're asking is, what's the range of fx? Okay, well, let's go back and say what fx was. I can't remember. fx was equal to, that's where I come past, fx was equal to 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 5. And now I've sort of ignored that. That's going to come into play now, the fact that x is going to be greater than 4. Okay, well, let's have a go at doing this. This is a nice little end part. So we've got fx is equal to 4x plus 1 all over 2x minus 5. And x is, sorry, x is greater than 4 as well. And what I've got to try and do is to work out the range of this function. The range of this one will be the domain of the inverse. So, quick bit of uh, revision on reciprocal functions. Reciprocal functions are always going to look like that or possibly like that. That's one over X and minus one over X, but obviously they might be anywhere on our plane here. So it might be that I've got asymptotes here and here. And then again, I've still got the choice. I could have this situation or I could have this situation. So what I will do with any function is 
work out where the asymptotes are going to be, work out some sort of value where it hits the axes here, quick sketch of my function, and once I've sketched my function out, then I'll be able to tell what the range is going to be. So for the y asymptote, if I'm trying to work out the y asymptote, the y asymptote going across here, what I can put in is that my function is either going to look like that or it's going to look like that. But at this point here, x is going to be really, really big. And I can take that to the very end level and I can say x is going to be equal to infinity. So when x is equal to infinity, whichever of those two are, it's going to be getting very close to the y value that I want here. Now, you don't need to write all this down. All of this is just explanation for you guys of what I'm actually doing here. So for the y asymptote, this is the um, what I'd actually have written down. y asymptote, I'd just say f infinity is equal to 4 lots of infinity plus 1 over 2 lots of infinity minus 5. Well, if you've got a number as big as infinity or 4 lots of infinity, adding 1 on doesn't make any difference. And subtracting 5 off doesn't make any difference because they're infinity, they're big, really big, huge numbers. So what that then means is that that works out to be 4 lots of infinity over 2 lots of infinity, which works out to be equal to 2. Oh, that's a really cute way of getting the y asymptote, y equals 2. The x asymptote's even easier, it's even more straightforward. For the x asymptote, we know that on any function, we can't divide by 0. So if I put 2x minus 5 equals 0, which gives me x equals 5 over 2, I can't have that. So that works out to be my x asymptote. OK, so a quick sketch of what we're going to have here then. So I've got some graph where x equals 2 is going to be an asymptote. Oh, sorry, x equals 5 over 2. Apologies, x equals 5 over 2. It's always worth checking what you're doing. y equals 2. Gosh, that's awful, but I'll leave it on there. Uh, y equals 2 is also going to be an asymptote. Uh, this is a positive reciprocal. Now, you could work out all these values, but I don't care about those values anyway, because one of the things that we can say is from my function, x equals 4 is going to be there somewhere, bigger than x equals 5 over 2. And my actual function that I'm interested in is only this part here now. OK, so all I need to do is to see that if I can work out f4, which is what I am going to do, f4 works out to be 4 lots of 4 plus 1 over 2 lots of 4 minus 5, which works out to be 17 over 3, then the range of values that y can take is going to be from 2 to 17 over 3, OK? This part here is the only part of the curve that I would be interested in. That's my function. My function starts from there onwards. Again, very standard if you guys have been doing the revision, very standard here, but that's now going to give me my range of... Um, fx, which is going to give me my domain of f to the minus 1x. So I've not got a lot of space here. Let's just uh, write down in here. Whoops. So range of fx equals domain of f to the minus 1x equals 
and we're going 17 over 3 to 2 there. Make sure your answer is nice and clear here. I'm not a little bit unhappy about the way that I've set that all out, but I know that the next question's there, so I'm not going to try and give myself any more space. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, nice question. That lots of um, standard parts to it. All not complicated, but all where we need to be careful with our algebra. But yeah, not too bad a question. Hopefully that all makes sense.